I'm just going to cut the bullshit and go straight into this one with no introduction, but competitive or live service games have become an absolute joke and unfun over the past decade, and i finally given up the urge to wake up every day and hop on any of these games. I no longer get enjoyment out of playing any of them, I simply don't have the passion to play it for hours a day like I used to, and the overall experience and quality of these products has shifted so much to where it was so different to what it was a few years back. Call me an oldie or someone who should get with the times all you want, but these games have been milked, not tested prior to an update releasing. I'm looking at you, Apex. It's so stagnant with pushing forward that sometimes it feels like games take two steps backwards rather than two steps forward. I'm going to talk about what's made me stop playing competitive games using my go-to game, Apex, as a reference for what's been happening with the live servers. Considering the recent news on the battle pass and overall state of the game, it's at a point where I'd argue that it doesn't even feel playable, despite being playable. So Apex tweeted out a week and a half ago about changes to their battle pass, opting for two battle passes per split instead of one and making players pay for it with real money as opposed to Apex coin. In its current state, battle passes can be obtained with Apex coins and once you buy one providing you that you complete it and gain all the rewards, you'll always have enough for the next one, essentially saving you a ton of money and not having to spend for the foreseeable future as an average Apex So if I was to get a battle pass say from season 18 or battle pass right now and I get to tier 100, I'll always have enough for the next pass. So I don't have to worry about spending money outside of, you know, buying Apex packs or skins or events and stuff, right? But as a result of these battle pass changes, Twitter has since rioted about the changes and the game's been getting negatively review bombs to an overwhelmingly negative rating as of recording this video, leading to my first reason behind quitting these games, which is money. Now, money is something that I can understand from a game developer slash publisher perspective, especially for a free-to-play live service. There's no way for them to make money from game purchases because the game is free, so they need to find other ways to make money, right? Games, like all other mediums, are a business. They're made for us to spend and consume, albeit seeing movies in movie theaters, watching shows or movies on streaming platforms like Stan, Netflix, Binge, uh, getting comic books, whether you're reading them digitally online or buying them, um, you know, on paper, on paper or hard copy to be able to read them yourself and in person, right? These are all the things that we most likely you know, spend money on to consume whatever it is we want to consume. And... While I appreciate and understand entirely from the gaming space, since the money goes towards future seasons, expansions, or however content is distributed in the game you play, I don't appreciate it when there are so many options available that it just feels like they try to milk the customer more than caring about the game itself and trying to fix it. Oh. Take Apex for example, right? As of right now, the game has like five or six different currencies, which are Apex coins, crafting medals, heirloom shards, exotic shards, legend tokens, and now real money thanks to these stupid changes. To make matters worse, the negative reviews are all justified here, seeing that this was obviously EA's doing with all this money stuff, and Respawn don't seem to want to try and fix the issues that this game's been dealing with for years. Audio, networking, cheaters, DDoSs, occasional bugs with season launches, the newest error in the in the shelf, Apex Persistence Transfer cancelled. What the fuck is that? I haven't played in a while and seeing that in people's streams is nothing but hilarious next to CodeNet and CodeLeaf. I'm not sure how the experience is in other competitive games and please let me know if it's something similar, but shit like this really pisses me off. If you're going to summon the whales and get them to continue spending their money to fund the broken game when the majority of the community knows it's bad, why even, why even bother playing something like that? Even as of recording this video again, they dropped another trailer this morning on the new collection event that that's coming out, and they had the balls to put a reactive Havoc skin right at the end of it. Especially given that that gun at, a, at the moment is peak. It's the, it's the best gun to use in the game right now, and it's just, it's freaking ridiculous. I remember when Apex only ever had coins, tokens, and heirloom shards, and while heirloom shards are a 1 in 500 chance to get from an Apex pack, at least it felt like the money was well spent whenever you decide to buy packs or to contribute or just outright buy it up front. But with the dollar going up and everything getting more expensive, it just feels like skins these days aren't worth it. 
I could pay $30 for three under $10 games in a Steam sale and get more value than buying some fucking pixels on a screen. Even the rare Battle Pass skins from back in the day felt good too, like the Octane Glacier skin from Season 3. I think this is one of the coolest skins. I actually have this skin uh, in on my account since I played uh, Apex Season 3. And now nowadays we have this like stupid recolor shit on their rare, for their rare skins. Like this Valkyrie skin in the newest Battle Pass is just the same skin as the original, but it's black. Yeah, nice. Nice one, Respawn. I'm open to spending money on these sorts of games when it feels like it deserves it, but having all kinds of currencies and shit like this just discredits that out of the window and tells me that they just want to take our bread. So no, predatory practices and shit like this is stupid and dumb. Just look at the first Descendant or any Nexon game if you want next level MTX like this. Burnout is something that we all experience throughout all stages of life. We do something we love doing for a really long time, then you get to a point during the day or night where you come to the realization that you just don't want to do it anymore. Outside of this money shit that these games are doing, I did take occasional breaks from Apex from about a week to a few weeks and possibly a few months, presumably because of the state of the game at the time and simply not enjoying it. But sometimes you just can't do that and instead you get addicted, which I'll openly admit. I've been addicted to Apex Legends multiple times during different parts of my life. You know, I'd skip university just to play back when Apex first came out. I mean, Apex in 2019 was a completely different time, especially given that the game launched out of the water and no one expected it. Unless you saw all the streamers, you know, saying that they're behind the scenes, they're testing for like a project. I remember Shroud having a video on it or like a preview and it was really cool. And when Apex came out, oh man, it was something else. And even though I can still get that sort, same sort of fix from playing it now, given all the changes and the meta shifts, it's just, it's it's completely different, you know? And on top of skipping uni, I'd jump on while studying and working on projects because the boys were waiting for me and I'd get mad firmer for just not being there. And worse, I'd play this game 8 to 12 hours a day, especially during lockdown and my streaming era a year or two after. Um... Which is sort of justified, but being a small streamer and doing that day in and day out can take a lot out of you. And sometimes I'd get depressed about not having time to play other games or simply be in a bad mood. Every day was just Apex, Apex, Apex. Apex pubs, Apex ranked, Apex with friends. I guess that's just Respawn doing their magical work of keeping you in the game for long periods of time. Ranked is another thing to bring up since most, if not all, competitive games thrive on some sort of competitive playlist and... I always play to be the, the best player I can be, so what better place to do it than to jump into some ranked? You know, some days of ranked, you get a good groove going and have a good day, and other times you'll just be doing so bad that maybe you'll feel stubborn enough that you just want to keep playing because you have nothing better to do, no other games to play. I've Trust me, I've heard no other games to play so many times from so many different people and gamers, and to me, that's just an excuse to tell yourself that you're addicted more than you know. I hate to say it, but saying that you have no games to play when you probably have other games in your library or you just haven't bothered to take the time to look for something else that you can play. You know, it's just, it's, it's an excuse. It is. It's, it's shitty. It's not a good feeling. And the addictions can only get so bad when you don't want to admit to yourself that you're hooked. I've been in multiple scenarios where, you know, I'd just be playing Apex and I wouldn't even want to admit to my family or my friends that like, you know, I love this game. I mean, you can sort of tell from the actions and just me being on it. Like, you know, at times whenever I'm streaming or I just, I'm just playing the game, you know, the boys get home or someone gets home from work and it's like, holy crap, Cam, you're still playing? And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm still playing. Hell yeah. Because, you know, I really enjoyed Apex. I really enjoy it. I meant to say, sorry. You know, so yeah. And... I was in a rough spot in 2022 specifically and playing Apex was my place to relax and stress. But that would sadly result in making things worse and eventually having to drop out of uni for a while until I got myself together. That's when I realized that these games are only out here to keep me engaged and not think about the outside world, let alone focus on my YouTube content, which I strive to try and do and think about a lot of my days, but don't commit to the craft because of stuff like this. When it came to stopping, it was a bit of both. It came from my recent experiences of playing these games and realizing that it just feels like a waste of time when I could be going on with my life. Focusing on uni, exercising and getting my cardio fix and better yet, playing different games or games that are worth my time. 
I ventured over to single player games and started trying new genres that I've never tried like turn-based strategy, metroidvanias or just other FPS games. I felt joy, happiness and satisfaction from moving onwards and upwards with competitive games. I guess another thing that could contribute to this is age but there's a lot of professional players out there that are way older than me and still play these games as a sport and I commend anyone who continues to do that and make it their career. I just think that these games aren't for me anymore or maybe I just need some sort of big break until they're in a spot where it feels worth to put the time in and have fun. The other half came from the developers and publishers themselves pushing out horrible updates, more ways to monetize and worse yet lack of communication. Communication is key to maintaining a solid live service game and the more feedback is given, the quicker changes can be implemented and shown but Respawn don't seem to show any competence to that. I mean for fuck's sake, they reduced the Havoc magazine size like it's going to do anything when that's not even the problem to begin with. Yes it helps to reduce its effectiveness but it needs a bloody damage or recoil nerf. Make it make sense. Anyway, these decisions have ultimately drawn me and a lot of people away from the game and I assume you'd feel the same if Riot or Valve or Ubisoft were making such dumb changes that keep the meta either the same or just make things worse. I just feel that communication has been lost for a while now and I don't see it bouncing back unless they give enough of a shit that they make changes that the community asks for. I'd go on about pro players and them being prioritized for feedback and all that jazz but that's a whole nother topic. And you know, it's good to bring up other games too. You know, Ubisoft recently introduced their Siege membership which is basically a way of saying you pay every month for a battle pass and you get content and it's like on top of the battle pass you're you're paying more money for more shit and and the cheater problem on siege is also really bad too i don't even know if it's getting any better but every time i go into siege streams it just seems like they have something to talk about with cheaters i just don't know if it's getting better or getting worse but from what I can gather, it's definitely just becoming a problem that either Ubisoft don't give a shit about fixing or they're just struggling to fix. Valorant. Um, Valorant has incredibly overpriced skins, which to this day, they still have overpriced skins. I don't know what the reason is behind charging 90 to 100 bucks for some expensive as freaking skin or $50, but their skins are ridiculously overpriced. Even though I think the overall state of the Valorant or the game is like pretty solid, from what I've seen, I still think that just having overpriced skins puts a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, PUBG, you know, PUBG is is janky, old, and that game also has its own share of problems and cheaters too. Uh, Counter Strike 2, while I think Ca Counter Strike is decent, I think that game for me is personally difficult, which is why I don't bother to get myself to play it. But the cheater problem in that is a lot worse than most of these other games, which even prime matchmaking the the subscription or the thing that you pay to you know get access to special lobbies and stuff is not enough so people have to resort to external sources like face it which is the perfect example i can think of and because apex has been trying to do that with realm but both face it and realm are external sources or ways to play competitive with its own anti-cheat community and like systems where it's not anything valve or respawn related so anything that gets monitored is just from that um system alone and nothing else point is competitive games are a waste of time for me and i don't want to gatekeep or tell people that they shouldn't play these games because if you still love them keep continue playing them you know if you love apex for its gunplay or its movement keep playing it if you love valorant because it's slow tactical and fun keep playing it if you love overwatch keep playing overwatch you know i just wanted to speak about my own personal experience and hopefully give you a bit of insight or if you feel some sort of way an incentive to maybe step away from these games and go do something else be something else just wanted to get some thoughts out as i wanted to make this for personal use but hope that a message of some sort can go out thanks for watching and as always i have more coming to you soon peace